Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to day 5 of Legends of Chess tournament organized by Chess24.com platform and today I would like to show you the game which is in blitz time format. 5 minutes for white, 4 minutes for black, no time incrementation. Yes, that means it's Armageddon game. Uh, and we had Armageddon in the game between Magnus Carlsen and Vasily Ivanchuk. Um, because Vasily Ivanchuk won the first first game in the rapid time control, then we had the draw, then Magnus Carlsen equalized the score, we had another draw um, and of course Armageddon has to decide, black has to draw, white has to win and the winner get two points and the loser get one point, so that's the rules. Um, and without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. The blitz ranking is adjusted, so just for your information. Uh, we have d4 by Vasily Ivanchuk and now knight on f6. We have c4, e6 and now bishop on g5 and that's Indian game uh, it's called Seirawan attack. So I believe, you know, Yasser Seirawan has something to do about that. Uh, probably he, he played it mostly. Of course, in this uh, opening, you can go for something like d5, knight on c3 uh, and go to, you know, uh, queen's gambit declined. However, the main line is h6. And this is what was played by Magnus Carlsen. We have bishop on h4 and here uh, Magnus Carlsen didn't go for the main line. It's pretty obvious that bishop on b4, you would like to play uh, bishop on b4 as the dark square bishop is on h4. Um, and then after knight on d2, c5. Uh, and here white have to be very careful as black can, you know, move the, the queen to a5, the knight can jump to, to e4, so have to be very precise. a3 is okay, taking on c5 is also okay, and the game can continue. However, keep in mind that the king is still in the center and black can castle uh, very, very fast. Uh, but Magnus Carlsen play bishop on e7 and now we have e3. So Vasily Ivanchuk uh, doesn't go for anything fancy, just e3, normal development. And now b6. So uh, Magnus is waiting with the d5 or c5 moves. Uh, and here uh, the, the main line is actually a knight on c3. Uh, and after bishop on b7, knight on f3, everything is pretty normal. Uh, knight on e4 and after exchanging all the stuff as the bishop is under attack twice. So bishop on e7, queen on e7, knight on e4, bishop on e4, uh, bishop on e2 and after castle, castle, the game can continue. And it was played plenty of times actually after transposition from other positions also uh, it was played you know plenty of times. Uh, however, Vasily Ivanchuk uh, usually plays something unorthodox and he played bishop on e2. So the idea is after bishop on b7, which was played by Magnus Carlsen, to move the bishop to f3, counter this dangerous bishop on the, on the main diagonal. Uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, just want to, you know, exchange as many pieces as possible as uh, he plays as black. Uh, he has less time, however, he just needs a draw. So bishop on f3, knight on f3 uh, and now knight on e4 just in the spirit of the opening. And here instead of taking on e7 Vasily Ivanchuk makes a first sneaky move. So queen on c2 and now bishop on h4 is not possible because uh, queen on e4 with the attack on the bishop and the rook as there is no bishop on b7. It was exchanged already. So pretty nice plan. Ho however, you know, Magnus Carlsen is too experienced to fall in the tricks like that and play f5 um, defending the, the knight. And now we have bishop on e7, queen on e7 and knight on e5 threatening to fork the rook and the queen. And what would you play as black in this position? Magnus Carlsen went for the castle, inviting actually um, 
to fork the queen and the rook. The point is, this actually is playable and it's pretty good for white, but for a completely different reasons. Uh, because after knight on g6, queen on b4, you see there is a check. And after knight on c3, uh, the rook cannot be taken. Rook on e8. However, uh, after a3, this queen has not many squares to, to actually run. So after queen on c4, knight e5 with the attack on the queen, queen has to be moved to a6. And then after knight on e4, f takes on e4, queen on e4, white gonna take back the pawn. Uh, and also, as you see, the rook is under attack and the rooks cannot be uh, connected very easily. Only with the, you know, a knight on c6, but it doesn't look good. Black gonna lose another pawn. So black would have to play some gymnastics move like queen on a5. And after b4, queen d5, but it's still uh, better for white to play. Look at this knight. This knight has not easy, you know, way to, to develop. Also, the c7 pawn is behind, so white would have the very, very comfortable game. However, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk didn't go for that. It's too complicated probably to, to calculate. As you see, the line is quite long. Um, and if you see, you know, the, the queen on b4 and this knight controlling the squares here, so it's always, you know, very, very risky and you need a lot of precision to play. So Vasily Ivanchuk goes for the safety and we have the castle. Uh, queen on e8, now controlling uh, g6, so the knight cannot jump there. And now f3, kicking the knight. Knight on f6 and now knight on c3. We have d6, uh, also kicking the knight of Vasily Ivanchuk, knight on d3 and now knight b on d7, developing the knights, rook a on e1 and now queen on f7. Uh, we have e4. So look at this. Uh, Vasily Ivanchuk controls all the center and Magnus Carlsen waiting for his opportunity to play. For now we have f takes on e4, f takes on e4 and now... Uh, Magnus don't want to wait for, for any e5 move as this knight is pinned so he played e5 uh, by himself and Vasily Ivanchuk plays d5 closing the position uh, and his knight actually are um, ready to attack on the queen side uh, as black has the two weaknesses one weakness on c6 and one weakness on c7 so how to exploit that we have queen on g6 by Magnus Carlsen, making a space for the rooks to double the rooks on the f-file. However, Vasily Ivanchuk starts the attack on the queen side. Knight on b5, attacking c7, also keeping an eye on a7. So rook has to go uh, back to c8. And now knight on b4, threatening to jump to c6, exploit that hole, uh, and then jump to e7. And that would be devastating, all this beautiful family fork. Uh, we have a6 for now, kicking the, the knight. However, first knight on c6 with, the, with this threat, which I just show you. Uh, and now, of course, you cannot play that because, uh, because that's completely losing. So Magnus first play king on h8. And now... Uh, White actually could go for something like knight on e7, exchange the rook for, for two knights. However, it's not really the greatest idea. After queen on e8, knight on c8, uh, a takes on b5, c takes on b5, queen on c8. The only advantage white would have is these three pawns, which could be very, very dangerous. However, uh, these two knights probably gonna, you know, focus on e4. Uh, so it would be pr pretty comfortable to defend by, by black. Magnus Carlsen shouldn't have any problems. So that's why Vasily Ivanchuk uh, prefers to retreat with the knight. We have knight on c3 and now rook on f8 preparing the rooks to be doubled. We have b4, uh, attack on the queen side starts, rook on f7 and now rook on f3. So uh, Vasily Ivanchuk uh, wants to double the rooks on the open file as well. Uh, we have rook a on f8 and now rook e on f1. And Magnus Carlsen want to exchange more pieces, so we have knight on b8. Knight on b8, rook on b8, wasting more tempi. Uh, however, uh, Magnus, of course, is happy about exchanging extra knights. Uh, but Vasily uh, has the attack on the queen side. So queen on a4, attacking the pawn on a6, so rook on a8, defending. Uh, and now c5. 
So uh, trying to uh, to destroy the pawn structure of black, we have b takes on c5, b takes on c5, and here Magnus Carlsen uh, makes a quite strange decision because he just should connect the rooks as this knight can jump to b5 and the attack on the on the d6 can be very unpleasant, but connecting the rooks and waiting for uh, Vasily Ivanchuk, what he's gonna do, maybe exchange the the, the pawns and then uh, focus on, on d6, that's possible. However, the knight cannot jump anymore as the rooks are connected. So that would be uh, pretty okay, but Magnus Carlsen play d takes on c5 and look at his pawn structure. Completely, you know, destroyed and very easy to be targeted. So, uh, for example, these pawns, you know, are, are very easy easy to be attacked. So we have queen on c6 by Vasily Ivanchuk, obvious move, attacking the, the pawn and also attacking the rook. So we have rook on b8. Uh, and now there is one idea by Magnus Carlsen, you know, uh, to attack on, on g2. But it's nothing dangerous here as the rook can go to g3, you know, uh, attack the, the queen or even move to, to f2 and everything will be fine with the position. So what white should play, just, you know, pick up the pawn on a6, for example, this way and after rook on b2, uh, rook on g3 and the queen has to retreat, so queen on h7. And after queen on e6, win yet another pawn. So, for example, queen on g8, win the pawn. And this is very comfortable position. A completely winning, actually, for white. So, that was chance of Vasily Ivanchuk. However, he played rook on g3, which is still okay move. Uh, because it's kicking the queen, queen on h7. And now, instead of taking the pawn on h6, which would be the best move in the position. Or even move the, the queen to e6 and taking this pawn. Uh, he play rook on f5, rook on f5 with the idea of taking the, the pawn. However, uh, the rook was on the first rank. For now, the knight defends b1. However, it can be deflected. Uh, and it is very, very sneaky position now. Uh, we, because we have rook b on f8. Uh, and here is the problem. The pawn cannot be taken because look at this knight on e4 attacking the knight, attacking the rook, but there is also the checkmate on f1. So after rook on f3, the only move probably knight c3 just winning the piece. Um, and of course, the knight cannot be taken because of this checkmate. So Magnus Carlsen retreated with the with the rook to the to the f file, uh, and now we have rook g on f3. So everything um, goes back to normal, and Chucky still have much better position. But what to play now? Uh, Magnus goes for queen on g6. He want to be as annoying as possible. So again, he's um, you know watching at g2. This rook can go around and, and try the same way. So that would be threefold repetition, which of course um, Vasily Ivanchuk is not interested. However, here rook on e5 is possible uh, because the knight cannot jump to e4 because the queen is hanging. So that's a huge difference. So uh, after, for example, rook on b8, again, rook on g3, queen on h7, and then rook f5, and white gonna have this passed pawn. Uh, of course, it's, it's again, it's the winning position. So that was possible. Also taking on a6, this is also a very fine move. However, we have queen on c5. Queen on c5 is actually the one of not many losing moves in the position uh, and here Magnus Carlsen again could play knight on e4 I'm saying could play because he didn't see that and he didn't play he was fixed on this idea uh, and you know continued the, the attack on g2 he was just fixed but let's see what would happen if he played knight on e4 the point is if the if the knight is taken uh, then actually rook on f5, rook on f5, queen on f5, uh, winning the material. The only way, this is a checkmate here, so that's quite serious, it's queen on f2. Uh, and after, of course, the, the knight cannot be taken because the rook is hanging. But after queen on f2, and let's say knight on f2, uh, rook d8, and of course, uh, black gonna win that game with the extra exchange and also extra uh, two pawns, so that's definitely is enough to win the game. And also, if white tries something else, the best choice would be queen on f8. Uh, queen for two rooks, that would be the only option. And after rook on f8, 
Rook on f8, uh, king on h7, knight on e4, queen on e4, uh, but it's still much better for black. Usually in the positions like that, the side with two rooks uh, are much better. However, in this uh, position, this pawn gonna fall uh, and black gonna just, you know, uh, advance this pawn and, and win. And if white tries to actually uh, defend it, then queen on d4 with check. And after king on f1, e4, uh, let's say rook on f7 and uh, black gonna easily win with that pawn. However, Magnus Carlsen missed that winning opportunity and he played rook on b8. So he was completely fixed um, on this one. And however, it's, uh, you know, it's not so dangerous, as I said, but Chucky has to, you know, make the same move. So threefold repetition was possible uh, and then Magnus Carlsen could win. Uh, however, queen on c6 pretty easy solution and this is again winning for for chucky he can win this pawn uh, he can you know win this pawn uh, very easily there are no knight on e4 anymore however believe me or not but vasily ivanchuk didn't move the queen and you know to pin the knight uh, and he also didn't move for example the queen to a3 to control uh, for example b2 uh, anything would win but not the move he did queen on f2 queen on f2 is actually losing move uh, and this time magnus carlsen spotted that immediately and play knight on e4 and in this position vasily ivanchuk resigned there are uh, no pins here, so the queen cannot be taken. And now the queen is under attack, the knight is under attack. The point is, if the knight takes the knight, then rook on b1 and there is the only one way to continue, queen on f1. And after rook on f1, king f1 and after rook f5, rook f5, queen f5, black gonna play with the queen against the knight, so of course it's winning. And also uh, after knight on e4, there are no tricks to exchange the queen for two rooks, uh, because now we have rook on f7, uh, the knight gonna jump to, to f2, and after rook on f2, uh, let's say queen on d3, and this pawn gonna win the game. So for example, uh, rook f on f3, defending the knight, uh, however, queen on d4, king f1, e4, and this pawn just gonna win the game. Uh, the rook has to move, the, the, the knight is under attack, this rook gonna join the game also, and uh, black cannot checkmate or, or do anything here, so uh, also this is winning. This is why after knight on e4, Vasily Ivanchuk resigned, so <laughs> he get uh, one point, because losing in Armageddon, uh, it's, you know, granted with the one point. Magnus Carlsen get two points, and let see the standings so Magnus Carlsen is not a sole leader um, anymore he has a uh, 14 points and Jan Nepomniachtchi has 14 points as well uh, Vladimir Kramnik 10 points Peter Svidler lost in the fifth round so and um, still having uh, nine points uh, Anish Giri eight points Boris Gelfand six Vasil Ivanchuk five points he just got one point now Peter Leko four Ding Liren with only one win three points and Vichy Anand two points he got the one point uh, today uh, after losing Armageddon something strange happened because uh, probably that was the mouse sleep uh, losing mouse sleep uh, because after after the move very strange move uh, he just resigned so these are the standings after round five i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other quality content press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one